Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton here on Monday, November 29th. Yeah, November 29th. Yesterday, no. 28th. 28th. I think I had 29th in the notice. Oh well. You don't think so? All right. Um... Well, yeah. Good morning. Glad you're here with us for a little time in God's Word as we uh, now move into the time of Christmas. Now, uh, that's something I explained to a few people on Sunday. We're in the time of Christmas, but the time of Christmas is divided into seasons, smaller units that are seasons. So from now, uh, yesterday, until Sunday of the Epiphany, or, or sorry, the day of Epiphany, um, January 6th, the, the 12th day of Christmas. Un, until that day, we're in the time of Christmas. But the season of Christmas comes after Advent. So there's the time of Christmas, there's the season of Advent, the season of Christmas, which is what everybody's waiting for, and the season of Epiphany. And that makes up the time of Christmas. Um, so are we in Christmas? Yes, we're in the time of Christmas, but this is the season of Advent. So Christmas starts December 25th. Um, and yesterday, uh, most of you heard readings uh, and, and hopefully sermons that are still pointing towards uh, Christ coming in judgment on the last day and are being ready for it. Um, mine was uh, awake. Stay awake. Um and so, yeah, so now, but next Sunday, next Sunday, we begin uh, to hear uh, the readings that are pointing us towards Bethlehem and the manger. Um, I haven't looked at this coming Sunday's readings yet. I know the next Sunday is, I believe this Sunday has a little bit of John the Baptist stuff, but it's next Sunday that's a voice in the calling in the wilderness. The 11th, and then, and then the, of course, the, uh, the 11th, and then uh, it would be the 18th, um, I think begins the, the uh, Annunciation or the birth narrative. I don't remember which, um, and it depends on which series, which lectionary you're in. But uh, so, yeah, so the time of Christmas, the season of Advent. And, and, and you may have noticed as we began that um, the, the pre-screen and the, 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 the uh, image that I put up during the hymn, uh, those are blue now because the, um, the color for the season of Advent in the time of Christmas is blue. So, all right, got that out of the way. Let's... Um, Beautiful weather here today. Well, cold, but the sun is shining. There were some clouds this morning, but uh, as the clouds, uh, sun came up, it kind of cleared the clouds, and it's beautiful out there. Let's see how you guys are doing today. Glenn, good morning. Uh, glad you're here with us. Kathy, good morning. Sunny, 24 in Chicago land. Glad you're, you're, uh, not glad you're down there with the family yet. Um, 24 degrees in Chicago. Um, that's that's actually colder than we are. No, it's not. We're 19. We're 19. What am I thinking? <laughs> Connie, good morning to you and Robin back from the PCI. I saw your pictures there uh, from when you were over in New London with the family. And uh, I got your message last night, so I'm glad you guys made it home safe. Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. Uh, uh, Michael, good morning. Uh, 82. Uh, hey, good morning, Karen. Uh, Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Bonnie, there she is. Sun found its way through the heavy clouds. That's what I said. And we're, we're like I say, we're sitting at 19 here, according to the no, weather service. 27. Oh, Bonnie says the thermometers say 20. Is that, but is that out on the east side of the house? Not the sun at 34. Our weather station. Our weather station says 27. Okay, so we're air temp here in, in the hill in Irma is 27. <laughs> Debbie and Grant and Ann, good morning. Do you guys, Ashley, good morning. Glad you're here with us. Jerry, good morning. Mooshtak, good evening, brother. Verna, good morning. And Renee, we got a bunch here. Uh, good morning, Renee. And uh, cloudy, but not windy. Oh, okay. Yeah, after four trees down there. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I remember that. That was one thing about the thumb. I mean, you, you get... And where I am in Wisconsin here, we get winds. Don't don't get me wrong. Um, and we've got 
oak branches and maple branches that come down all the time. Um, our old oak trees that are over the parsonage here um, are old trees and they shed branches, but boy, I remember the winds, the, the, the thumb is so flat that when you start to get the winds, they just blow and there's nothing to slow them down. At least here in Wisconsin, it, it's a little, the ground is a little, you know, wavy and so it slows the wind down a little bit. Um, and even though we're on the hill in Irma, we're still below the big hill that's across the highway. So, all right. Well, good morning to all of you who are sitting in the background uh, and those who will watch later, perhaps on YouTube. Good morning. Good day to you as well. Let's go ahead and uh, get started here. Now, I, uh, did I uh, make sure I'm on the right page here? Okay. Let me flip here. So, pay, uh, Lutheran Service Book. Page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families. The morning order is where we uh, begin each day here uh, in our daily devotion. So although I've been thinking about, I was thinking in Advent we'd change it, but maybe with the new year we'll do something a little different for a while for our um, our liturgy. Yeah, Bonnie said New Year. I, I wished everybody a happy new year yesterday because it is the new church year. Um, Advent begins the new year in the church as well. Uh, so happy new year to everybody. So, um, all right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, psalm, uh, psalm 102, verses 13 through 17, Psalm 102, 13 to 17. I guess I could have maybe made those blue as well, down in the text, the text down here on the screen, blue as well. I will have to see. Uh, our psalm. I guess I've got it white because normally I'm wearing my black clerical, although the last week has been kind of lazy. Um, and the white stands out better when I'm... Yeah. All right. Psalm 102, verse 13. You will arise and have pity on Zion. It is the time to favor her. The appointed time has come. For your servants hold her stones dear and have pity on her dust. Nations will fear the name of the Lord... And all kings, all the kings of the earth will fear your glory. For the Lord builds up Zion. He appears in his glory. He regards the prayer of the destitute and does not despise their prayer. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hmm. Arise and have The time... It is the time to favor her. The appointed time has come. And I, I, you know what? When you take four verses, five verses, one, two, three, four, five verses, uh, out of the context of an entire psalm, sometimes it's hard to see. But I think being it's the season of Advent, I think the, the people who chose the psalm for today uh, were trying to point towards the time being right, the appointed time. Uh, I think it's St. Paul who says, in the fullness of time, God sent his only begotten son. And so that time is coming. Um, I'm not going to do a whole lot more with that psalm because I just it's just not, nothing standing out there. So we'll move on to our reading. Our reading today, Isaiah. We're going to be reading through Isaiah here for the next few days. Isaiah chapter 2. Now, uh, if, if you want to go back, yesterday would have been Isaiah uh, chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, uh, 1 through 28. Um, but today we're on Isaiah chapter 2, 1 through 22. Um, so we're just reading chapters of Isaiah. The additional for today is Isaiah 3. Uh, tomorrow's Isaiah 5, just to give you an idea here. So Isaiah 2, and, and this is, if you were to open it up and look in your Bible, um, this is all written in that staggered column format. Um, this is not 
prose, but poetry. Um, um, I, I don't know if I go so far as to say that this is a, a, a psalm or a hymn, um, but it is poetry. And so uh, what, we're, what we're hearing um, is uh, where prose you could take, literally, this is going to be, a lot of this is going to be image, imagery. It's poetry, right? Imagery, con uh, concept, uh, generalization. So, <clears throat> Isaiah 2, beginning at verse 1. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Oh, this is part of the reading from yesterday, too. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that he, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall dis decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. For you have rejected your people, the house of Jacob, because they are full of things from the east, and of fortune tellers like the Philistines, and they strike their hands with the children of foreigners. Their land is filled with silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Their land is filled with horses, and there is no end to their chariots. Their land is filled with idols. They bow down to the work of their hands, to what their fingers have made. So man is humble. Hum so man is humbled, and each one is brought low. Do not forgive them. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust. From before the terror of the Lord, and from the splendor of his majesty, the haughty looks of man shall be brought low, and the lofty pride of men shall be humbled. And the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. For the Lord of hosts has a day against all that is proud and lofty, against all that is lifted up, and it shall be brought low. Against all the cedars of Lebanon, lofty and lifted up, and against the oaks of Bashan, against all the lofty mountains, and against all the uplifted hills, against every high tower, and against every fortified wall against all the ships of Tarshish, and against all the beautiful craft. And, all, and the haughtiness of man shall be humbled, and the lofty pride of men shall be brought low. And the Lord alone will be exalted in that day, and the idols shall utterly pass away. And people shall enter the caves of the rocks and the holes of the ground. From before the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of his majesty when he rises to terrify the earth. In that day, mankind will cast away their idols of silver and their idols of gold, which they have made for themselves to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to enter the caverns of the rocks and the clefts of the cliffs. And from before the terror of the Lord, and from the splendor of his majesty when he rises to terrify the earth, stop regarding man, in whose nostrils is breath, for of what account is he? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, I've said before that the headings on Scripture passages are not always helpful. Um, this time, I think we're going to consider those in the in the English Standard Version text here that I have before me. Uh, verses 1 through 5 are entitled, The Mountain of the Lord. Um, and and that, is, uh, that is the text that was read yesterday morning uh, in, in um, the three-year lectionary series A. 
This was the, the Old Testament text. Um, and, it, and it's talking about the mountain of the Lord. I mean, you, you, the, the, this time, it's, it's, there's no arguing it. Um, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways. The first part Isaiah is talking about here is when the Lord returns, um, he will, amongst his people, give peace. Um, still got a little bit of that cold remaining here. My nose gets tickles that raw from all the blowing. Um, so he's given this, the word of the Lord, uh, the word that comes to Isaiah, son of Amoz, concerning Judah and Jerusalem. So he gives this imagery to, ah, uh, to Isaiah, um, that in the latter days, in the days to come, in the days that follow, um, the mountain, uh, the mountain of the house of the Lord is established as the highest of mountains, right? The, the, the higher up it is, the more authority it has. And God's uh, house, if you will, is above all, right? God's authority is over all. Um, and, he, and he talks about that lifting up and then, and then going up to that house. But then this language of, of peace, right? Um, going to the house so that he may teach us his ways so that we may walk in his path. So we may do what is pleasing to God. And out of Zion is the law, but from Jerusalem comes the word of the Lord, the gospel of Christ Jesus, right? And, and from between nations, he will judge, right? And he will judge justly. Um, swords beaten into plowshares and spears to pruning hooks. A nation not lifting up sword anymore against nation. Not even learning war. Right? Nobody will even know what war is. What would be the, the point of it? And finally, a call to the house of Jacob, which is Israel, to, to oh, thank you, Ashley, uh, the, 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 to go up to the, to the, the, uh, the, uh, the house of the Lord, um, to walk in the light of the Lord. Right, and it's Saint John who says um, that Christ is the light coming into the world, uh, that He is the light of men. <laughs> And then from verse 6 to verse 22, um, the heading gives us the day of the Lord. Um, and we're not talking now about um, the day of Christ's first coming, right? We're not talking about uh, baby Jesus in the manger. We're talking about God's return on the day of judgment, the day, uh, the great and awesome day of the Lord. Um, and and he's, he's the... the, the Isaiah speaks the words of the Lord here. He says, you've, re you've rejected your people, the house of Jacob, because they are full of things of the East. Well, what are the things of the East? Well, even today we associate some of these things with the East, but fortune tellers, right? Um, idols. Their land is filled with idols. Uh, they bow down to the work of their hands. What their own fingers have made. Right? The idols of stone and wood and gold and silver that are deaf and mute and incapable of doing anything. But they honor those idols, um, which is displeasing to God. And so man is humbled. Each one is brought low, and the Lord will not forgive them. So they enter into the rock, they hide in the dust, they hide from the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of his majesty. Uh, those who, who have haughty looks, those who look down their nose at others thinking they are so righteous will be brought low and the lofty pride of men shall be humbled and the Lord alone, the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. And it, it goes on, it's the same kind of language all the way through here. It's warning us that the um, that, that there is nothing that will stand against the Lord on that day. Um, the cedars of Lebanon, no, the oaks of Bashan, lofty mountains, uplifted hills, 
against every high tower, against every fortified wall, against the ships of Tarshish, which at this time are known to be uh, great uh, warships, against all the beautiful craft, against the haughtiness of man, the lofty pride of men shall be brought low, and the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. Idols will utterly pass away, um, and people will even be casting away their idols, which they made for themselves to worship. Um, fleeing to the moles and the bats, into the caves, the, the clefts of the cliffs. Stop regarding man in whose nostrils is breath, for of what account is he? And that's, uh, that's the ultimate thing here, is that, is that we, we don't rely on uh, human reason and wisdom, uh, but our faith is in the Lord, right? Even, even, um, even a congregation's pastor, and I, I, you know, this is almost terrible to say, but don't count on the pastor. Uh, count on perhaps what he preaches when he preaches that which is engaged in the, in the text. Uh, but he is still just a man with breath in his nostrils. Um, he, if, if he's doing his God-assigned task, if he's, he's carrying out his vocation that God has given him, he is preaching the word in its truth and purity, uh, but he, if he steps aside from that, then he is nothing. And so the, the, the morning from Isaiah that the, the day of the Lord will come. And Michael, you asked me to do more with God will punish sin. And, and we, will, we will do that, probably not during the season of Advent. Um, but this is a warning um, that those who remain outside of God's promises... Uh, who, who trust not in God, but in themselves or in idols, will find judgment on the great and awesome day of the Lord. When does that day come? I don't know. The Lord himself said the Son does not know. Well, he, according to his human nature. Um, but yeah, the, the judgment will come, and, and we have, uh, we ought be, Terrified, we ought fear the Lord uh, because His judgment will come. Um, but that fear draws us to trust in Him, and then in that trust we find uh, His well, the compassionate heart of our Father that gave His Son to die for us, that we on that day would not suffer but live. All right, let's look to our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we'll continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. I, you know what? Blank. The forgiveness of sins, um, the life everlasting, and the, the resurrection. I, you know, sometimes you're just on autopilot and you lose stuff. And in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. There. We got her. Woof. We'll continue with the Lord's Prayer as he taught, it, taught us, I hope. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Monday morning, starting a new four-week cycle here, the first week in this little prayer book I use is focused on that 
prayer that our Lord taught us. So the first, the first uh, uh, prayer today is based on the petition of hallowed be thy name. So we pray. Oh, that's Sunday morning. Let's try thy kingdom come. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of David, your eternal throne in heaven fulfills the promise made to your father David. The visions of Holy Scripture depict that throne in utmost glory. Yet you arrived at your heavenly coronation by way of humility, meekness, mercy, and grace. You were born not in a palace, but in a low estate. You rode no war horse into the city of Jerusalem, but a humble donkey, as Solomon did before you. In love for your own people, you submitted to the earthly authority of Pontius Pilate and were crucified with a crown of thorns and purple robes of mockery. <laughs> Yet how true were the words posted above your crucified head, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Now you are risen, ascended, and reigning with all authority in heaven and earth. As my heavenly King, send your word and spirit to conquer whatever regions of my heart I have withheld from the righteous reign of your kingdom of grace. With your wisdom that exceeds that of Solomon, rule over my mind, which is darkened by worldly thoughts. In your goodness and love, direct and order all my ways, that I may sincerely believe and live a godly life before you this and every day. In your most holy name, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask also that you be with those who suffer, whether in body, mind, or soul, the effects of injury, age, or illness. We ask that even those who are caught in spiritual doubt and darkness, that you would be the light that shines in their lives, giving them strength and comfort by the promises that you have made and fulfilled through your Son, our Lord. We ask this especially today for Peter, Pat, Lois, and Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Annette, Pam, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Grant this in the name of and for the sake of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, then it says go peacefully to work. So God's peace be with you, and we will see you back here Tuesday, tomorrow morning, for our daily devotions. God's peace.